Hey, 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 everybody, more Chase Media here. We are back with part two of modeling, rigging, and animating a spider robotic leg. Now, uh, as you can see, I've added some more geometry into the leg. I just felt like it was a little bare, so I just kind of did some basic stuff with it. Nothing too major, but, you know, it does make it look kind of nice. Um, and today, we are going to start with rigging. Now, I just want to advise that what I'm going to show you for the process of rigging is one of a hundred ways that you can go about rigging an animation. This is just my personal preference on doing it, especially when you have multiple pieces like this. All right. Now you can also use this process to rig and parent any multiple, like any pieced out object that you want to have animation to. You can use the same process. It doesn't necessarily have to be a spider leg. It can be anything that you want as long as you have these steps that I'm about to show you. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select the base of our leg, which is essentially going to be the part that's going to connect into the body of whatever character that you are doing this for. All right, and then we're going to want to go right click and we're going to snap cursor to selected. Now, mine's already there. This is just in case any, you know, if at any point that your cursor got offset, it's just a little easier. All right, and now with nothing selected, we're going to go shift A and we're going to add in an armature. Now, as you can see, you can't really see it right now, but to fix that, we're going to click on this little kind of running man here. And then under viewport display, we're going to click on in front. Now we have our bone in front. Now from here, we're going to click on tab or sorry, select tab. And then with our armature selected, and then it should have this little part um, at the top here selected. Shouldn't have anything else, just like that. And then you're going to click on G and then Z. And we're just going to move it up right to about there because this part is the non-movable part. This is the joint. This is going to tell it where to move and pivot on. So we want to make sure that that's kind of like right there, right where we created that little extrusion at the bottom. All right. And then we're going to go uh, from here without selecting or touching anything else. We're going to hit E and then Z. And this will extrude another bone up along the Z axis. Now you don't have to use uh, Z. Like once you hit E, like from here, if I just hit E, it'll extrude anywhere I want. Um, it's just when I do the extrusion, especially for like this type of a model, um, and I'm doing it upward, Z axis just means that it's nice and aligned no matter what. All right, so now we have our armature created, but now we need to make it so that way the armature moves or the model moves when the armature moves. And how we do that is now we're going to go and select all of our pieces here of the leg, and then we're going to select our armature, making sure that this is highlighted in the bright yellow and the legs are highlighted in the dark orange. Now, then we're going to hit Control, uh, Control P or right click and then parent, because that's essentially what we're trying to do is parent. I'm going to do Control P because I'm trying to keep little shortcuts to show you guys. Shortcuts really do make everything. Um, and then under Armature Deform, we want to select the two with empty groups. All right. So now we have, if we go to um, any of these here, if we select like this here, you'll see that this has now is vertex groups, bone one, bone two, and bone three. Same thing here, bone one, bone two, bone three, and bone one, bone two, bone three. All right. Now we need to make it so that way we can tell Blender, hey, I, when this bone moves, I want this piece to move, not this piece, just this piece. And how we're going to do that is we're going to select on the bottom of the mesh here, and we're going to tap into edit mode, select everything with A, and then we're going to go to bone, not bone one or bone three, just bone and assign it. Bam. So now if I click on the armature here and press control and tab together to go into pose mode, you can see now that piece works with it. All right. Now I will say also double check. So as you're going through and adding in your bones to your armature section, definitely make sure just to go into pose mode really quickly um, to make sure that they're all lining up properly. Because sometimes I've had when I add multiple bones to um, different vertex groups without checking it in pose mode, some reason doesn't always uh, save the information. So it might be because I might have some overriding information when I've done it in the past. Honestly, most likely, but realistically, um, just a good thing to always double check. 
All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on this one. So now we want to know which bone is which. So we're going to go into pose mode. So this one, so we're going to click on a little bone icon. So that's bone, that's bone one, and that's bone three. So we want bone one to be attached to this, uh, this part of the leg. So we're going to go back into the under, uh, little reverse triangle there, tap into edit mode, and then select bone one and assign. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to tap into edit mode, select everything, bone three, and assign. So now, if I select this and go into pose mode, you can see now everything is working together. We've got a nice little workable mesh. But we don't want to make it, you know, we don't want to have to worry about creating the organic vibe of when the leg moves here to, to here to here, like... We don't want to have to do that. Let's make this process a little easier. So while in pose mode, select the top bone, the bone that's going to be for the leg base, go into pose, and then click on inverse kinematics, and then add IK to bone, and then to new empty object. All right, and you can see now it highlights this yellow telling me that this is tied to this. And now we're going to go back into object mode. So now, if we take the entire section here, I'm going to rotate it. Uh, we'll rotate it on the X axis, but I actually want to go negative. So we'll go RX negative 90. Um, actually, nope, because that puts our plating in the wrong position. So this is the one thing I do hate about armatures is that they are very annoying if they're in the viewport. Um, all right, so let's try this again. All right, so we're going to go R, Y, 90. Bam. All right, there we go. Now we've got the proper orientation for our plating. So this is where it gets really, really cool. So we're going to hide the armature just so that way it doesn't get in our way. And then I'm going to grab the empty here that we used for the inverse kinematics. And look at this. You have a full workable mesh that is then just parented to that little IK target. And what's cool about it is that it's only gonna move this bone, but it's gonna kind of tell the system, okay, this bone and this bone also need to be moved to be able to create the motion. So that's the thing that's really, really, really cool about it. And here's also something, like if you need to line things up a little bit more, if you go into pose mode, and then select on this, you can still move this whole other section. There is no limitations just because you have this side anchored. It actually gives you the ability to use both sides of your um, armature to be able to properly line it up. Uh, if you're trying to like, you know, since if you're making a spider, there's gonna be eight of these total. So you're gonna line them up on your mesh. Um, so that's one thing that's really, really cool. I do like uh, the inverse kinematics for that reason. Now, we still have um, some more things that we have to do, though. So now that we have it rigged, and we have the ability to animate it, how do we make this animation a little bit more consistent um, and just a little easier for the purposes of what we're trying to do? Well, that's actually very easy. So once again, we're going to select um, on the object that we're going to be adding something to. In this case, it's going to be the IK target. I'm actually going to go ahead and name this. We're actually going to name this leg controller, because that's essentially what it is. All right, and then we're going to add, or actually, nope, first we gotta make sure we snap cursor to selected, and then we're going to add a curved circle. And then we're gonna rotate it along the Y axis, 90 degrees. All right, so now I'm actually gonna take these, um, move them over just so our leg is nice and straight, uh, kind of getting it in the middle. And then I'm going to select the circle and go and hit tab. And as you can see, we have these little kind of like handles we can mess with, you know, we can move them around and rotate them and do all we want. But what we want to do specifically for this setup is we want to select these and these, these two handles here, right click and set handle type to vector. All right, and this will give it this kind of like nice little angular shape. And we're gonna drag it out with S, so we're gonna scale it outwards and give it this kind of like more long section here. And then we're gonna take the bottom section and then G, Z, 
and then control hold and this will snap it up so that way it stays in place so g to grab and then grab it along the uh, z axis with z and then control to snap it back into place and this gives you a nice little motion so this looks like you know a motion that somebody might you know move their foot into but that's not going to be what's happening here at least not yet so now what we want to do is we want to add something called an object constraint. So we're going to go ahead and go back into object mode, click on the IK target or the leg controller, and then we're going to click on this little buddy here. This is the object constraint menu. And we're going to click on add object constraint and click on follow path. And then we're going to take the little eyedropper here on the target section and we're going to set it to the Bezier circle. Now as you can see something weird kind of happens here. This happens almost every single time I do this. Um, it creates some kind of like weird dropping because it doesn't know how to register it at first. Um, but now we have something to work with. So I'm gonna set it to zero and then I'm gonna hide the armature here. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring the timeline to zero. So now just to kind of go over what we've set up so far, um, so pardon my chair if you can hear the squeaking, I need a new one desperately or some WD-40. Um, but now we've told this controller, which controls the armature that is attached to our leg, we've told this that we want you to follow this path, right? So now in the object constraint menu, we have an offset. We want to make sure it's set to the Y value. Um, and then the up axis is the Z value. You can mess with this. Like if you find that you want to make some weird kind of, excuse me, some movements and stuff, you know, you can mess around with that. We're going to keep it with these for right now. And then we're going to go ahead and keyframe at zero. And we're going to move it up 30 frames. And from here, we're going to change the offset to 100 and the keyframe that. And then now it'll give us one full rotation. But that's not really enough. We want to make it, you know, we want to test and see how things are going to look uh, with a more consistent animation. How you do that is on your timeline with your mouse hovered over your timeline, go shift E and then click on linear extrapolation. This is going to allow your leg to then follow every 30 frames. It's going to do a rotation of 100. So this gives you a full from start to finish movement. Right, and you can see that this it's keeping this point stable and it's just moving these bones, but it's keeping everything together. The object constraints are really keeping it in place without forcing like this piece is not coming out, that piece is not coming out. It just creates some really good motion without kind of, without clipping or you know any weird things happening. And actually, I will say I see that there is some clipping happening, like right here. You can kind of see where it's clipping into the mesh a little bit, but that's all right. That's, that's not a huge, huge deal. Um, I mean, the, when the legs are moving, you probably won't really even notice it unless you're looking for it. But, um, but yeah, so that is rigging, animating, and modeling out of a really cool spider leg. And I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I tried to make this one a little bit shorter. I know the last one went really, really long. Um, but I am going to be putting out a couple of more videos um, showcasing how to be able to make like certain plants and uh, vines and stuff. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Um, but, you know, stick around. There's more content to come. And as always, stay animated.